Hi, everybody. Brian McNichols here from ToyingPlans.com. I am live on Facebook right now, so if you are watching this later on YouTube, because we will post it to YouTube, this was filmed live at noon Eastern on Thursday, September 21st on Facebook. And right now, I'm going to add my partner, Angela, in here, so we can uh, both talk about Disney stuff. So... Hi, Angela. Ooh, this is working Hello. again. Weird. I know. It's so fun. I almost don't keep expecting this to work, but it does. I know. <clears throat> Let's hope I get the comments today because for some reason I couldn't last time. Okay, and my ending last week, my phone would not turn off live. Oh, really? So, like, 25 seconds, I'm, putting, I'm pushing end, and it's not working. It's not working. I know everyone was probably laughing and I was laughing, but I, I, it was very embarrassing. I didn't watch. I just hung up and <laughs> didn't watch to the end. Um, Uh-oh. I can't hear anything. Oh, no? Hmm. Is my... Can anyone else? Oh, well, I uh, I can hear you and I just turned it on on the Facebook page. Yeah, I can hear you through the Facebook page too, so. All right. Thumbs up if you can hear us so we know. Uh, I can hear. I think it's a problem with uh, with Angela's sound. Um, hold on. Let me see what I can do here. Um, in the meantime, as I was saying, anybody watching this on YouTube later, come over to our Facebook page. Every Thursday, we we do this. Um, Looks like yeah. we're doing well. People can hear us, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Angela can't hear what we're saying, so I can talk about it now. This is fun. All right, we're doing well. Okay. Can you hear me, Brian? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why it's taking me so long to like figure this out. Okay. That's why I said you might, <laughs> next time we do this, uh, if you're watching this, you might want headphones because uh, it works much better. Um, so <laughs> this right, is going to okay, be. So Brand Brandy, can you hear us now? I, I hope, okay, because she, let us know, Brandy. All right. Sorry, Brian. Continue. Can you hear me now at all, or is it still not working? Well, it was Brandy who had an issue hearing us. Oh, okay. Oh, so it was some yeah. unused. Oh, okay. I thought it was you yeah. that couldn't hear. Oh, no. Oh. I can hear you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I was saying, anybody watching, we're going to post this to YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, every Thursday at noon, one of us uh, at least – does a live show on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash drawing plans. And last couple weeks, we've been doing them together because it's fun and different. So, and I remembered my laptop this time, so I don't have to keep poking at the phone, hopefully, as, uh, and as comments come in. And now I can't see the comments. Okay, then I will be, I'll be the commenter oh, today. There they are. Now I can see them. Okay. The okay. answer is you have to okay. swipe right on the screen, and then you can see the comments. So, who knew? But... I know. I know. Okay, let's see. We have some Jean. Hi from Maryland. You asked quite a few questions, so I think we're going to answer some of those today. Uh, Haley, thank you. I like my purple hair too. <laughs> my mom doesn't, but I, I do. My daughter had a pink streak for a while this summer, but um, it washed. It was supposed to last like two weeks. It washed out in like four days, and she has blonde oh. hair. So I don't know why, but it would should have stayed with it then. Yeah, I don't know, it, but she can't wear them to school, so so it should be had to do it over the summer. But right, I'm not in school anymore. No. <laughs> all right, Brian. So do you want to be the question reader today? You guys sure. can tell we're like not prepared at all. No, we did not talk this through beforehand. <laughs> well, anybody that normally watches me, I'm never prepared. So I did. I'm normally on top of things. I'm using my Slytherin cup today, though. So you would be in Slytherin. Well, I'm going. I'm going in. in in a direction of best to worst house. So we've gotten Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Slytherin, and then I'll wait a couple weeks and do Hufflepuff. But you know, what's like really <laughs> annoying is that I really want to be in Gryffindor and I'd even settle for Ravenclaw, but every test I take, I'm in Hufflepuff. <laughs> that is, you're too nice. That's the problem. I know. I, I know. I know. Most I, people have Hufflepuff. I don't. Okay. I have actually Moving never on. gotten Slytherin, which is seems kind of weird. I've gotten Gryffindor and Ravenclaw are the two that I seem to get. But You give me, like, Ravenclaw vibes. What house do you think Brian and I are in? Let us know. Type below what house you think we would be in. I want to know. 
Yeah, that would be interesting to, to see. Actually. <laughs> um, well, we got a couple of easy ones so far. Uh, easy as in short answers. Sharon asked if Fort Wilderness is open yet. Yes, it is. It opened uh, yesterday, I believe. So um, it is open. And Jamie, or no, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Melissa asked if there's anywhere to meet Moana. No, not at, not at Disney World right now. She used to meet in the back of, um, of uh, a One Man's Dream in Hollywood Studios. And they took her out when they, now they're redoing part of One Man's Dream. It's going to be part like preview center and, and then and part of what it always was, like a, a Walt Disney Museum. So they took her out of there and, and they didn't put her anywhere else. She is meeting during the Halloween parties. And from what I've heard, the lines are getting pretty substantial. So, oh, yeah, that's what uh, I saw. Somebody, Misty, there just said um, that she is at the party. So you can meet her there. And I've heard the lines are pretty, pretty long, so, which is good, because that means hopefully they will have her in a regular meet and greet. I thought that, um, I thought that they uh, would, would switch out um, Merida for her, because Mer Brave is a few years old now. But um, and Merida meets in that kind of weird spot, little garden next to the castle. Um, and for a while, they were using that as like the intro to princesses area. They had Rapunzel there and then Merida. And then they kind of just stuck with Merida. So I don't know. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm hoping that's, Moana comes out. That's a good spot for Merida. And thinking about it, I'm not sure where you would put Merida. Would you put her in Adventureland? You know, where would you place her? Or not Merida, Moana. Moana. Oh, Moana. Um, yeah, I mean, she could easily go in, in Adventureland. Or even, um, I, think, I think it would be cool to add her to the, the lineup at Ohana for breakfast because they have Lilo and Stitch there. So if they did, like, instead of Pluto, maybe mm -hmm. do Mickey, Lilo, Stitch, Moana, I think that would be really yeah. cool. Um, and she fits in with the Polynesian theme, obviously, very well. So. Right. But uh, but no, I don't know. I, I mean, they could redress that to make it look more more tropical. But uh, yeah, other than that, and, and I mean, even Merida, if they wanted to keep the Merida meet and greet, I'm not sure exactly where else. I, I mean, they could do it in the UK probably in Epcot. But um, oh, yeah, they could do that. I but think. even you know, because she's more of a medieval Scottish thing, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Even that would be a little dicier, but. Well, I just feel like Moana's been so big, so huge. The fact that she's not in the parks at Walt Disney World is just kind of ridiculous. To yeah. Me. Like, so many people want to meet her. I get so many questions about it, too. Yeah. She would be there. And I want to meet her. I know my daughter would just, like, be obsessed. We, we went, we were on a trip in May, and we had rented a car, and I brought my iPod to plug into the car. And all the kids wanted to do was listen to the Moana soundtrack. That soundtrack is like 35 minutes long. So we'd be in the car I for know. like two hours listening to it four times through. And it, it started to drive me crazy. But um, but it worked. So, And they, they, yeah. they loved it. Yeah. So mm. I'm normally the one who's like singing the loudest. So That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, let's answer some more questions um, and some comments because we didn't get to too many comments last time and I want to do a better job about that. Uh, Janie, only two days in the park, first week in December. Want to see Pandora. Should I go at night or in the morning? I haven't done Pandora yet. No, I just did a few weeks ago or a month or so ago, actually. It's, it's fantastic. Um, it, it kind of depends what you want to prioritize in Pandora, Jamie. It's um, if you really, really want to see the bioluminescence, the, the, all the plants light up and stuff, obviously you have to be there at night for that. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the attractions, the morning is still the better time to do it. They, Flight of Passage will have a long line all day long. And, um, and I see somebody else, Ryan, asked another question about Flight of Passage here. And... Um, all right, I'll get to your question in a second, Ryan. But um, it, you kind of have to get there, not just even at park opening. Like, you really want to be there. If the park opens at 9 to ride Flight of Passage and then get right on Navi River Journey, you kind of want to be there by at least 8. And honestly, 7.30 isn't going to hurt you any. Um, you're still waiting an hour and a half, but if you got there at, like, 8.45, you'd also be waiting an hour and a half. It would just be later in the morning. So, 
and the line never really drops below an hour for flight of passage. Even now, when the parks are not that busy, it's still staying at like 60, 75 minute actual wait time all day long. So if you, from a touring perspective, if you're only going to be in Animal Kingdom one day and you want to do everything, get to the parks at like 8 a.m., do flight of passage, then do Navi River Journey, and then the rest of the park is pretty easy after that. If you really, really want to see the bioluminescence and you don't necessarily care if you ride both attractions, then you can go later. And um, the Navi River Journey, the weights drop pretty substantially the last like hour or so the park is open. So you can eat, definitely do that. Flight of Passage is, is kind of iffy. Uh, and, and Ryan's question about Flight of Passage was, if they have an 8 a.m. pre-opening breakfast reservation and get done quickly, can they get on flight of passage or is there already a line formed? There's a line formed. Um, we, did, we did the rope drop, uh, which is Disney nerd terms for park opening, um, twice on my trip. Now, it was August, so it was a little busier than it is like now. But um, we got there once about 8.30, once about 8.45, and we, it was about two hours or so when we got off the attraction. So, you know, we got there at 8.30, it was about 10.30, we were getting off, 8.45, it was, it was 10.45. So, um, you know, even if you get done by 8.30, 8.45, you're looking at, at being in line for an hour, hour and a half. So um, it kind of stinks if you have a breakfast reservation, eights as early as you can make it, but it's better than getting there at, at 9 or 9.30 because that line will be in li literally Africa. Uh, it will go across the bridge into Africa and turn around. It's insane. Well, jumping off of that, uh, we had a question yesterday uh, from Shannon wondering if it was better to go on an early extra magic hour day to experience Pandora. Yes, it, it still is better. Um, if you can't be there for the and even with the extra magic hour, if it starts at 8.00, get there like 7.30 earlier if you can get everybody up and moving. Um, but if you can't make it, say you, you're running late or your family doesn't like to get up early and you can't get there till like 8.45 or 9, don't bother because it once 9 o'clock hits and all the non-hotel guests can get in there, it's going to get way worse, way quick, quicker. Um, but if you can make it for the extra magic hour, 100% do that. Okay, I, there's a question from Marion. Uh, there's a comment about Flight of Passage. She wants to experience the queue, but she doesn't want to wait in the line too long. Uh, is the regular line management early in the morning? Um, I'm not... If, if, if you want to experience the queue, you know, you're going to have to wait in line with how long the lines are right now. Yeah, and I don't think because like the the um, the Harry Potter attractions, um, especially the the um, I'm blanking on the name, the one that's in Hogwarts, they um, they do have you can actually tour the line there most of the time, even if you're not going on the attraction. But Flight of Passage, I don't think they do that. It, it never hurts to ask. Uh, if you if you want they there is kind of a back doorway in like if people have to use the bathroom when they're in the line they let you out and then let you back in right before you get on the ride so it's possible that a cast member might just let you in that way and say yeah go ahead and you know kind of lean in because the last room in there is the really cool one that's the, the room with all the experiments um, you may be able to at least see part of it that way but, um, but yeah, I mean, even right now, at least now, they, they're not going to be there until May. So, you know, that'll be a year on. So maybe it won't be quite yeah. as crazy, but I, I have a feeling it will be probably. I saw somebody else asked in here, where was it? Kate asked if Flight of Passage was worth it. Yeah, I think it is, unfortunately. Um, the, the way... The way I'm judging, I, I like it. It's a really, really cool ride. I don't like waiting in line, so I probably would say no. But my kids are, are eight and six, and they liked it. We went the first day of our vacation. We waited almost two hours to get in, and they liked it so much that they, we did it three times total on the trip. The last, wow. the last day we were there, 
they wanted to do it again. And we told them, well, if we do it again, we have to go early and we'll probably have to wait in a really long line. And they still wanted to do it just to ride it again. They were willing to wait another two hours in line. So they clearly thought it was <laughs> worth it. Um, well, and that's a kid's attention span. If kids are willing to wait that long, mm -hmm. you know that you know that's saying something. I have two aunts who are just like huge Disney nerds, and one of them actually was the one who told me about touring plans. Like, you need to follow this blog. So, um, they said it's the best attraction they think Disney has ever done. That was their opinion. Yeah, it, it's not my favorite attraction. I still I'm a sucker for Haunted Mansion, and I really like Tower of Terror, but. It's one of the most technologically impressive ones they've done. It's the best simulator by miles. I mean, by like way above even like Soren and that. So um, it's, it's definitely worth seeing once, I would say. Everybody should go and plan that one morning where you're going to get up early and go do it. Um, just, you know, to see. That was kind of our plan, too. We figured, well, we'll do it once, get it out of the mm -hmm. way, and then we ended up having to go on it multiple times because the kids loved it so much. I have to try it out. I hope I get to you in November. Um, yeah, we'll see. It's my goal. We'll see if I make it there. You will. You can do the, um, you can do the rider swap on it, too. So at least you and, you know, not everybody will have to wait all at once, so... I think that's going to be a good idea. And Lisa, I noticed, had a question about having a bad leg and um, the conveyor belts are really difficult for her for the attractions. Now, um, like for Haunted Mansion, do they stop those conveyor belts if needed? They definitely can. Um, okay. They, I mean, probably most people that are familiar with it have been on it when they get the, you know, the ghouls are causing trouble, or, you know, and uh, every ride mm -hmm. has a different one. And that most of that is they stop it because there's a, a reason to either somebody needs it to be stopped or we, we got stopped uh, under the sea, the Little Mermaid ride. Uh, our kids wanted to ride together and we found out the hard way that they can't do that because uh, anyone, if it's a separate car like those are, anyone that's under seven has to be with someone that is 14 or older and my daughter is not, not old enough. So, and my son is still under seven. So um little mermaid they asked them how old they were and when they told them they shut the whole ride down and made oh, one wow. and made us switch cars so they can do it and they can do it quickly so i'm sure if you tell the cast member as you're getting up there i can't get on this way we need to stop it i i can't imagine that being a problem that's good to know I'm not going to try that. That's very, that's a very dramatic story. It was, I felt so bad because I knew all through the ride, there were people just stopped dead for, it was only 10 seconds probably before they started again. But I was just thinking, oh, now we're those people that made the entire ride stop. Oh, I never mind being stopped when I'm on an attraction. I never mind. I, I just think it's, you get to be on it longer. So I don't ever care. I, I don't mind, except that I always feel like I get stopped at like dead zones where there's like I'm staring at a blank wall. Uh, I, I also don't like it when they cut into the soundtrack because like the Haunted Mansion, while they're making the announcements, they turn the the mm -hmm. actual music goes way down, and I don't, I want to just hear the music. I don't really care. But... Let's go on to some new ones. Do you want to ask a question? Um, sure. I see we're getting a lot of flight of passage questions, so we might as well just keep going with with those um right. let's see I, well brad also asked about um breakfast reservation they have a tusker house at eight fifteen. would they be able to rush breakfast and get to pandora before rope drop what i would say there um because from tusker house to get to pandora isn't isn't well it, it would be easier if you could take the africa pass it like way into pan into uh, pandora they usually don't let you do that in the morning they make you go around through discovery island so but what i would say is even though your break your reservations for 8 15 show up like get to the park entrance at like 10 to 8 um if you show up at the uh, at tusker house at 8 a.m even though your reservations for 8 15 they'll see you anyway it doesn't really matter so get there at 8 anyway and it's like, a, and, and factor in that walk, it's like a 10 minute walk from the front of the park to Tusker House with kids at least. So um, get there at eight anyway. They will, the characters, 
usually they run on about a half hour, 40 minute cycle. If you're getting to, you know, if it gets to like 845 and you haven't seen somebody, grab one of the people in the blue shirts, those are the character handlers, tell them which character you haven't seen and have them, you know, they'll, they'll, and tell them you, you're trying to get out of there quick. And, um, and they will, it, it's a buffet, so the food part won't be a problem. I think you can, I would say get there at eight, that should give you plenty of time to get out of there by like 845 and get over in the line for, for Pandora. Um, let's see, Jean asked if, or Jean, I suppose, depending on where you, where you are, um, asked if that said that uh, they heard that the early morning flight of passage, they aren't utilizing the queue um, so she thinks that's what the other person was referring to. That's not entirely true. They're utilizing most of the queue. Uh, there are sections that they don't, and we're not sure why. Uh, one of our statisticians, Steve, is actually in, in, in Disney World right now, and he's tried asking them a few times. And when I was there, I asked several cast members, and nobody, they either don't know or they're specifically told not to tell us because uh, none of them will say why they don't use sections of the queue in the morning. My, my personal guess is that they are, they want the lines to look really long going over that bridge towards Africa and then back because right now, first thing in the morning, nobody's riding anything else in the park. Everybody goes to flight of passage. I mean, you could walk on to Kilimanjaro Safari, Expedition Everest, Dinosaur, all the ones that used to draw crowds and and nobody's going there so i think they are I, I think they might be doing that on purpose to try to say so people walk up and go whoa that line's crazy i'm not getting in it um but i i don't know i don't know why exactly i was researching scott's question um any word on when the new haunted mansion tiki mug will be available at trader sam's um last year it was announced in late september early october hmm. from what i could google so, um, yeah, if they do it again, wouldn't you think it'd be around that time? I mean, you would think so. If, if they're doing it again, I don't know why they wouldn't. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it would probably be around the same time frame. Okay. Um, and then Amanda's question, is there any chance of getting into Cinderella's Royal Table or be our guest as a walk-in? Um, it is possible, but I would say pretty rare and... The reason I know it's possible is because my um, my aunt cousin walked up to Cinderella's Royal Table for dinner one day, and they said, do you have, you know, a reservation available for us? And they just happened to. Someone had just canceled. But most of the time, I wouldn't say that'd be the case because they're so popular. And it depends on the number of people, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, I think it can be done, especially if you're not picky on the time or anything like that. Because if you go up first thing in the morning, sometimes they'll they will have something later in the in the day that you could use. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily expect it to happen. I've got one here from from Stacy who actually asked it on her post yesterday too. So um, they are. She has a, a two part question. One is that uh, park hours have been published for, this is for March of 2018. And she's saying that basically the parks aren't open particularly late, even though it's, it's spring break time. Disney does this, this with their hours all the time. The way they do about six months in advance, they put out the hours, their preliminary hours that are about the shortest hours that they're willing to go. Uh, about two weeks before the start of any given month. So for instance, the October hours were just updated last week. They will extend the hours based on what they think the actual crowds will be. And they do that for mostly staffing reasons because they don't, they want, they're trying to get as, as few cast members on payroll as possible. So they don't want if people don't have to be there till midnight, they don't want people to be there till midnight. Those hours will 100% extend. They will probably all extend till I would say 10 or 11 at least. Weekends will end up being midnight. Sometimes they even roll till 1 a.m. at the Magic Kingdom, but that's getting more rare. So they will extend as it gets closer, but you probably won't know for sure until February of next year. Um, if you go on to the Touring Plans website on the, and click on any given day in the crowd calendar, we have what the expected hours were or what, what more specifically what the hours were for that day last year, which is a pretty good indicator of what they're going to be. 
she also asked about the Rivers of Light dining package because right now they're only available through December. They do those in chunks. Uh, all of those dining packages like that, they do in, in like two or three month chunks. Mm -hmm. So they won't get to March until probably December or yeah, December-ish, I would say. They'll release it. If you, um, you know, watch like the Touring Plans forums or any any forums, you'll find threads on when things are released and people will, will notify you and stuff like that. You can usually predict when they'll release. I don't know it off the top of my head, but, um, but yeah, I would start watching for those like November, December range. Um, Haley or Hallie, I just realized I didn't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, I'll say Hallie this time. Um, have either of you done the caring for giants experience or magic behind our, uh, steam trains tour? My dad and uncle have done the steam train tour at Magic Kingdom, and they loved it. They thought it was super interesting. But as far as caring for giants, I don't know anyone who's done that. I've read a few reviews of it, and the reviews have all been really good. Like that, they say if you are interested in elephants and who isn't, um, that it it's you actually get you know relatively close to the elephants, and you get to talk to the actual trainers and people who take care of them. So. I've heard good things, but no, I don't know anyone that's done that one either. Yeah, let us know if you've done that Caring for Giants tour, um, and let us know how you liked it. All right, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read the comments and trying to find the answers <laughs> no. as we go. We have questions about Coco. Are we excited to see Coco? I, I am. I think it's going to be really good. Um, and my daughter... She's really interested in, you know, Dia de los Muertos from watching Elena of Avalor on Disney Junior. So I think that that's something she's going to be really curious about. So we're definitely going to go see it. And then there was that rumor between uh, before D23 that will they turn um, the Grand Fiesta Tour into a Coco attraction, which I don't know. We'll see. If it's popular, I bet they, I bet they at least look at it. Yeah, I think that's... I think that's where they're going with everything now is trying to turn everything into an attraction if it ends up getting popular. Uh, Kate, Coco is a film coming out, I believe, in November, like Thanksgiving or something. It's about this little boy who uh, basically goes to the other side um, with, like, you know, dead relatives and this, uh, this, like, famous musician that he's really into who I think passed away. And it's kind of his adventure on the other side of the yeah it's a, it's a pixar movie november 22nd 2017 so that is the day before thanksgiving awesome that'll be really fun i think a lot of people will go see that i'm hoping it's gonna do well at least um ooh, cara has done caring for giants well worth it great price and all the money goes to the disney conservation fund so informative and you get to go backstage it just lasts an hour nice Thanks for letting us know. That's what I got to start doing is more of the tours and things like that. There's so many of them and, and we haven't done almost any. I did the, um, um, I can't, my brain is not working very well today. The, the animal kingdom one where you get to go on the rope oh. bridges and stuff. Oh, uh, wild, Africa. wild Africa trek. Yes. Thank you. Yes. We did that one a couple of I years ago. It's great. It's so cool. I loved it. It is very pricey. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, I, well, I did uh, Keys to the Kingdom mm. at Magic Kingdom. Amazing. It was an eight hour tour. It did not feel like eight, eight hours. Eight hour I tour. Like uh, like, you, I, were you singing? Yes. Oh my gosh. You guys, this was recorded live. Brian I, singing. I did musicals in high school, so you're not the first one that's seen me sing. I was, oh the, dent I was the dentist in, uh, in Little Shop of Horrors my senior year. So you, so you died. There is a video out there somewhere. Well, yeah, but I also got to. But you got to. Talk I also got to torture someone in a dentist chair. So it was like my it was one of my best friends at the time. So that was fun. So you deserved it. Now Tom's calling me out. Brian singing. Oh no! Don't do that. The rest of this will just be her singing. I know. We're just gonna have to sing out. Actually, before this live stream, I was googling the lyrics to. Marky Mark's "Good Vibrations." Oh. So I was rapping before this. Oh, I can do the entire song. Yeah. I, I see a wrap off coming coming up soon. Tony D's on the backup, drug free. Oh my gosh, you guys, this would be really good if we could get Brian to rap. <laughs> I, I can, I can, okay, I, I probably am, it wouldn't be that much worse than Mark Wahlberg was at what, 21 <laughs> or whatever he was then. It, 
it was it was his year that's for sure let's answer some questions from yesterday um <coughs> Let's see, uh, Ernest, planning a trip with my grandkids in 2019. We were looking at September 2019 because of the crowds, they're much lower and the weather might be cooler than June to August. I'm hearing Star Wars land may be open and I'm fearing our trip may be ruined because of hurricanes. Is early September a good time or should we gun for 2019 in uh, February? Um, I think either is a good time. September is still pretty hot, if not really hot, depending on when you're going in September. I prefer personally going in February because it's a lot cooler. You may get more rain. Um, you know, we've had it both ways, but I prefer February mm. around that uh, Princess Half Marathon. Um, as far as hurricanes, you know, I've also gone in late September. It didn't have an issue. It just kind of you know, it depends on the year, too. It's very unpredictable in that respect. Yeah, we used to go in September. Before the kids were in school, we used to go in September quite a bit. And um, it is, it's still warm and humid. Um, mm -hmm. You still get the thunderstorms, like, every day. But the crowds are as, about as low as they're going to get. Star Wars Land will be open by September of 2019. There is no way they let that slip past like the past summer if they can, uh, unless there's something major that happens, they're not going to let that slip out of the summer. Um, but so it will probably be busier at Hollywood studios than it would normally be in a September, but you get to see star Wars land. Um, mm -hmm. February, Early February is is probably also one of my favorite times. It's also not that busy, and the weather is much more reasonable. You will get the occasional cold Florida day. Not cold for me in Pennsylvania. Definitely not cold for Angela in Minnesota. But, uh, you know, where the morning will start out in the 30s sometimes, Fahrenheit. Um, you know, so I guess the aughts, Celsius. But um, they but the crowds are reasonable. The temperature is a lot more reasonable. Once you get to close to president's day in America, which is usually what the third Monday, I think in February that yeah. then the crowds start picking up and they kind of stay picked up through like spring breaks in March and that. So early February is really cool. I would probably recommend that unless you really want to see star Wars land like this guy then, you know, September should be fine. Hurricanes are definitely something, you, uh, you know, I almost never recommend travel insurance, but the way it's going this year, I almost feel like you should, might want to do that in hurricane season. Yeah. Especially right now, like you said. Um, I was checking out comments, and I think we're good to go over to our, our other questions. Amy said, First time vis visitors going to Disney in a few months. I missed my opening window to book dinner reservations, but was persistent, check daily. Anyway, her son likes uh, character dining meals, and she got a reservation for Chef Mickey's, but they're being relocated or, you know, to mm. the convention center, and she just wonders if it's going to change the experience. Um, I have been to Chef Mickey's several times, mm. and honestly, it's the ambiance isn't like... It's not like a themed restaurant as far as the ambiance. It's not like there's special decorations necessarily or like, you know, you know, the food might be themed, but the tables and the buffet are pretty standard. So I don't think it'll affect your experience being moved to the convention center because that's all very generic. It's really the characters that I think bring it to life. Yeah, I agree. I don't think the the only the the only cool thing really about the atmosphere at Chef Mickey's is if you're at one of the tables that can see the monorail coming in and out just because it's always nice to see the monorail but yeah. um but that's really only some of the tables a bunch of the others are in the back where you get a nice view through the windows onto which side i think that's the bay lake side but one of the one of the lakes and um and that's you know it's it's fine it's not great i really don't think being in the convention center is going to change chef mickey's all that much honestly uh um let's see Get that one i'm checking off our our questions from yesterday as we go through I know, them. That's what I'm too. you can ask a question tom tom points out that uh that hollywood studios will be the hot ticket when star wars is done that is true i mean i think i think we're seeing a lot with pandora um you know probably 
seventy percent of what we're going to see with Star Wars Land. I think it's going to be crazy. I think the going Hollywood Studios is going to be a slog for a year, maybe more. Once once Star Wars Land is done, it's going to be a mess in in all the best ways. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I keep I keep tearing up every time I think about uh, about piloting the Millennium Falcon. So. Oh my gosh, that's like a childhood dream for so many people. And it's, I am super excited for Star Wars. I grew up with it, but I get a tiny bit intimidated when I think about just how crazy mm-hmm. the park will be because Pandora was like, what, eight or nine years ago, and they haven't had a film since. Star Wars has been pretty consistent. They have a ton of films out. They're making more. And it's just, it's going to be huge. And that intimidates me a little bit because it's going to be so crazy. Yeah, it's going to be like hour long waits probably just to get into Star Wars land, let alone the attractions. Once you get in there, it's it's going to be rough for a while. And and Disneyland is going to be the the same thing. So, and they're putting it in Disneyland Park, which uh, that that already gets such traffic. It's not that big to begin with. No. I mean... I mean, it's one thing about Hollywood Studios where, you know, I mean, honestly, it's it's half of a park, if that, right now. But to put it in Disneyland seems like a crazy thing to do. Well, it seems like at that point, it could almost just almost just have its own park. With, I mean, it's just going to be a tight fit. Oh, Julia. Hi, Julia. You can pilot the Falcon on uh, Disney Cruise Line right now. Just saying. <laughs> That's true. We wouldn't know, Brian. <laughs> no. We, we would not. Um, I... Here's a question from Kate. Uh, any, and I know, cause I know your husband is a little bit of a Disney reluctant. So this might be a good one for you. Uh, any good ideas for my reluctant first time other half? I want to introduce him to Walt Disney World without scaring him off. He is over 50. So I know, I assume your husband is probably not over 50, but the rest of that checks out. Yeah, he is what we would call, what I like to call a Disney curmudgeon. I actually have an article dedicated to him and how to ease a Disney curmudgeon into a Disney trip. And, you know, I've, we've gone so many times, so obviously I can still get him to go. And there's a couple of things, you know, make them involved in the planning because if they find one thing that they really want to do, then it, it gets them kind of involved in the trip instead of you just planning a lot, you know, alone and then they're tagging along, you know, make them get involved, make them select a meal, make them select an attraction they want to go on or a park that they want to do. You know, um, another big thing is it gets very overwhelming with the crowds and, you know, just it's, it's just stimulation overload. So letting them go take a break if they need to. Um, what ESPN zone at the boardwalk or yeah, ESPN zone, uh, that's where my husband would go. You know, I would go to the parks or whatever and he would just watch a game, you know, because he likes sports and it would kind of let him him decompress and, you know. You know what I mean? Just kind of get away from the Disney magic for a little bit while still being in, you know, a Disney world. I uh, I just posted the link to your Disney curmudgeon uh, post Ooh, right there. But, it's um, old. Oh, my gosh. It is old. It's but still relevant. <laughs> neither one of us has written on the blog <laughs> uh, as much recently. But, um, oh. they, uh, yeah, I, I would say the same thing. I mean, the, the nice thing with Disney World is that – it is, there is something that everybody will like. I mean, there may be a lot of stuff they also don't. So what you kind of have to do is just focus them on certain things. We've traveled with, um, you know, my my mother, my father, my brother. Um, and like my mother is a huge Disney fan. My father likes it, but doesn't necessarily love it. He doesn't like lines. He's not... He, he mm-hmm. he's not always up to walking the the distances things like that. So honestly, what we do a lot of times with him is is we just tell him that he can hang out in the hotel for a little while if he doesn't want to get up early or whatever. He just won't because the bus system, mm-hmm. you know, you can just catch up to us later. And then right. we would, you know, we'll try if he he mentioned like last time we were there, he mentioned that he always he kind of would like to eat at Rose and Crown. So we went and did that. You know, I mean there there are things that that can be done you just have to kind of um you just kind of have to find those few things and say okay here look look at these these are awesome you can do this you know Uh, even for myself now because i've you know i 
a wonderful problem to have, but I've been there a lot in the last few years. So mm -hmm. I don't always want, when I go with my, my family and the kids want to wait in line, lines for stuff, I, I don't always want to do that. So I just kind of focus on things I can do, like shoot videos that I can post on YouTube and things like that. So. Right. And I will say that, um, you know, in my experience, me planning alone without consulting him hasn't helped at all. You know, it's been the times when I have said to him, okay, you're planning a day that has gotten him more involved. And especially with, you know, Pandora and Star Wars, you know, being two things that he's really interested in. Like, he is so geeked for Star Wars land. Like, he was that kid who, like, collected Star Wars cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, like, super into it. He's so excited. So Good. I think we might see a change over <laughs> the next couple of years. I'm hoping. Plus, you know... My kid's enjoying it. He doesn't really get a choice but to go. Yeah, well, and yeah. and I think kids in general don't re ever really complain about Disney World trips. Yeah, I feel. but <laughs> uh, I say no? here's here's an interesting one because this actually um, this actually just happened to one of our our status, uh, Steve that I mentioned was down there now. Lori said that she heard on on our lines chat, which is the chat that's within our our app lines. Um, which is wonderful, by the way. I'm totally biased. But there is a double booking problem on the reservation system, which is reducing the availability of resorts. We think there's a problem, too. We don't know what it is, though. Um, Steve needed to book a, I think, just one or two nights in Port Orleans Riverside and had a terrible time doing it. I mean, kept checking. There was nothing. There was nothing. Finally found one for, for a couple of days during his trip. Went over to Riverside, and the food court is half empty. The, there's nobody at the pool. There, it just seems like there is no one at this resort, yet there was no availability. They're not doing renovations as far as he can tell, and it's usually not that hard to tell. Um, because you see mattresses and stuff stacked up outside the rooms. So we think, and this is what we've heard too, is that there is some sort of issue with the reservation system, which is a very strange thing to happen to a company like Disney because they're leaving money on the table if people can't get hotel reservations. And we've gotten this a lot from users is that, um, from users of, of the touring plan site and, and app that, well, you know, you say it's not going to be busy in September, but there's no hotel reservations. And, and that's all true. But um, but it, it, there seems to be some sort of issue. Oh, Steve just joined now. Hi, Steve. Um, that I was just telling your story about booking the, the Riverside room and, and there being no uh, no reservations available. We there it seems to be something wrong. We can't figure out what it is, though. So um, if you're trying to book a short-term hotel reservation and there's nothing there, just keep trying because there probably is. And there's, it's just a weird glitch that presumably they'll fix real soon because otherwise they're not making as much money as they could. And that doesn't sound would like Disney. A, would it make a difference to call Disney directly? Or do you think that glitch is showing up in their system, too? I mean, the times I've, I've called Disney, it almost seems like their phone representatives now just check the website the same as we do. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's possible. I mean, they do technically use a different system. But I've checked on the travel agent system and on the regular, and they, they seem to be pretty similar. So it might just show up there, but it doesn't hurt. That's for sure. Okay. Um, I actually, I thought this was a really uh, unusual question because I just don't see it a lot. It's not a bad question. Uh, Robert says, how many days would you recommend per park if you usually don't get going until 2 or 3 p.m.? And the reason I thought this was an unusual question is because you just don't see it very often. You see more people getting there, you know, super early or maybe staying late. Especially um, touring plans users, yeah, tend to be. Yeah, exactly. We're like hardcore. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about that, Brian? How many days would you recommend per park? Um, I mean, some of it depends on what their goals are. If they want to go on all the attractions, that's different. If they don't have kids in their party, which if they're not getting going till two or three, my guess is they don't have small kids in the party, but maybe I know. I mean, mm -hmm. I have friends whose small children are, are night owls. Um, mine are, are certainly not, but uh, you know, so if they don't, if you don't have small kids and you're not doing any of the like kitty rides uh, that obviously won't take as much time. I think 
if you're starting at like three and it is a busier season where most of the parks are open until 10, you know, or, you know, well, Epcot's always open till nine, but if Magic Kingdom's open later, that kind of stuff, you can probably still do Hollywood Studios. You still only need one day. Um, mm -hmm. No matter, you could go at 6 p.m. and you would still only need one day. Um, yeah. Animal Kingdom and Epcot are probably one day, maybe a second if you uh, really want to ride the busier things like, like well, Flight of Passage specifically, or you, I don't know at that time because you'd have to wait till later in the day to get on Soar and Test Track. And it also depends on your Fast Pass situation. If you can get Fast Passes for Soarin or Flight of Passage, then you could still do those parks in one day. Magic Kingdom, right. you probably would still need to, uh, there's just a lot more attractions there. So I think you could still probably do it in five days and do most of all of the parks, um, presuming then you were willing to stay until park closing if you're not starting until then. Um, but you know, it's not that much different, honestly, than going first thing in the morning and you know for a few hours and then going back for a few hours in the evening like i do but um but yeah we, we you're right we don't see that a lot usually the the touring plans users are the ones that are raring to go at like 6 a.m and or or one of them is and the rest of the family is rolling their eyes and complaining about it <laughs> more likely probably uh no, when I'm when I get to Disney World, I am Nemo on the first day of school. <laughs> like I'm literally, I'm not lying. I am jumping on my husband, being like, "Let's go to Disney World! Let's go to Disney World!" And he's like, "Oh my gosh, go away! I'm so sleepy." I can also I sing most of it's a big big blue world, man. But um, I love that show. Uh, Kelly, okay, Kelly asked this question um, yesterday, so I'd like mm -hmm. to answer it because she just asked it again. Um, tips for food and wine with kids. I will be there, well, now she said, leaving tomorrow. Wow, um, that's awesome. I know, exciting. I think we both have tips for that. I mean, personally, because I have toddlers, I would not go in the middle of the day because, um, you know, that's when you tend to see it kind of be super hot, plus that's nap time. So, you know, you might have crabbier kids. Uh, I would just get there when it first opens. Mm -hmm. That's what we would recommend anyway, mm -hmm. is getting there when the park opens. Get them something simple. If you're going to get them, you know, something from the, a food booth, maybe get something simple that you know they're going to like instead of something more eccentric that you'd like to try. Uh, get them something simple first. And, um, oh, where's my other one? Oh, if you're there with a partner or a family member, whoever, consider splitting up. You know, maybe they can bring the kids on the Nemo attraction or Turtle Talk with Crush or just even looking around the World Showcase while you take your time and try different dishes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I would say something. I've actually, this is, this is something I probably shouldn't admit, um, but I've never been to Food and Wine. But um, so, <laughs> so, um when we used to go in September, they didn't start it that early then. Mm -hmm. So, and we don't, I don't like to pull the kids out of school right after school starts. And our school generally starts like the last week of August. So, um, so yeah, we haven't, I haven't been during food and wine, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, our, our general advice to everyone is, is go for lunch, go at 11. And, mm -hmm. you know, because it, and especially with kids, it, if on a weekend, in the evening, it will get rowdier than you would probably like to expose your kids to. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, I, with my kids, mine are super picky eaters. I wouldn't even bother, honestly, with the food. I, we just carry peanut butter and jellies with us anyway. Um, but yeah, that's a good, you know, what, what actually is, is a pretty good plan with the World Showcase is Agent P's World Showcase Adventure. Um, my kids really like it. You You can get a phone like thing from uh the the um, stand that's on the way to world showcase from future world but they really want you to use your own phone now to do it um but they do it in i think it's seven of the countries i know it's like mexico china germany france japan uh, uk um i'll do it and it's just this little phone-based adventure that they can do they take like 20 or 30 minutes it's within the country but it's kind of a good way to keep them in world showcase so if your kids are into that at all i would say you know go uh, 
set them up with that, have them, you know, go to a booth or two, collect some items, then walk into the pavilion, have them start that and just kind of follow them around while you're enjoying your snack. That is, um, that's, uh, that's kind of how I get to stay in World Showcase. And I see Julia points out that the hide and squeak is, is fun. It's a scavenger hunt like thing. You do have to pay for the map, but it's not super expensive. And, uh, and you do get a prize at the end, I believe. Uh, that is something they do during food and wine for the kiddos. Good question. All right, Brian, you can ask a question. I've been interrupting you. Oh, no, I haven't actually looked at the questions except for the ones last night. Oh, here's one I can definitely answer. Uh, uh, Jean or, or Jean, probably the same one, and I'm sure it's probably Jean. I just like saying Jean. Um, it reminds me of Jean Valjean and, uh, and, uh, or Jean Parmesan, I guess, from Arrested Development. But uh, uh, please discuss for a motion sickness sufferer perspective, Avatar Flight of Passage and the new Mission Space Green. I am a motion sickness sufferer, and so is Angela. So go ahead, Angela. You, I've talked for a while. Go ahead. Um, you know, if you, if it's a, if it's a, wait, wait, we're talking about more motion sickness, right? Mm -hmm. For some reason, I was looking at another question that had to do with being afraid of heights. Um, okay. Oh, great. Well, no, I can, I okay, that's fine. I can do this one. Cause I've, I've also been on both the new mission space green and flight of passage, which you haven't. I haven't so, done one yet. um, I haven't done either. Why am I, I answering this? Um, <laughs> well, you were raising your hand. I figured you had something to say, but the, uh, no, it was a green. <laughs> <laughs> mission space green is fine it doesn't move it, it it really just kind of vibrates and moves a little bit um you would have to be a pretty serious motion sickness sufferer like uh you know like probably not being able to ride in a car level of motion sickness that to for that to bother you and the screen is bigger now it's um i can't really show you on here it's, but it's um i would say two feet by one foot, uh, two feet tall by one foot wide kind of screen. Um, and it, honestly, that one, if it did bother, you could close your eyes and you wouldn't even notice you were doing anything because you're, you're not moving much. Flight of passage is more of a concern. If you can do, That's what I'm if, if you've been on Soren, if you can do Soren, okay, I think you'll be okay with flight of passage. It's definitely, it's a little rougher than Soren. Rough isn't a good word. It's, there's more movement than Soren, but it's, it's very, very similar. And halfway through the flight of passage ride, they kind of take a break. There's a part where your banshee flies into a cave and kind of takes a perch and you just get to watch, um, you know, pretty things. And uh, I, I feel like that helps a lot because, um, you know, that's right about the point where I'm starting to think, oh, my head's starting to feel a little weird. And then it kind of stops for a minute. So that that really helps a lot. My um you know, we, we've, we were on the ride with people that tend to get motion sick and it didn't bother them. So I think it's at least worth a try. Um, and I see Dinah ask if uh, you are still in a confined space in Mission Space Green. Yes, it's the exact same space. They just made the screen bigger. It's still where it, it comes down into your face and you're right there. So if you are claustrophobic, that is different. That may, yeah. that may st if it bothered you before, it will still bother you. Nothing has changed in that manner. Um, I do get motion sickness uh, a lot, um, even from elevators sometimes. Ooh. See, and spinning I is the one that bothers me. Yes, the teacups have never done, and I won't ever do because mm -hmm. I would vomit. Um, but, yeah, Mission Green, I went on the old one, didn't have an issue with it, and um, Soren, I haven't had an issue with. Mm -hmm. So if you think it will be a concern for you, just take a Dramamine. It might make you a little sleepy, but you won't vomit. So. Yeah. <laughs> Not Thanks, vomiting gosh. is good. Yeah, I will go back to my other question since I was looking at it anyway when I got distracted. It, again, is from Jean. Um, just basically wondering, should uh, do little kids ride on Expedition Everest? Should I ride on it? Um, will Dinosaur be similar to uh, Indiana Jones' ride at Disneyland? I worded that really badly. <laughs> but anyway... She wants to know if little kids can ride on Expedition Everest. They do have a height requirement. Um, 44 as as, inches. 44 inches. As far as... Or 46. 44 or 46. I'm forgetting at the we'll, moment. We'll fact it's in that. check for you. Yeah. As far as if uh, you're afraid of roller coasters, how do you think you'll do an Expedition Everest? Um, 
I would probably start on Seven Dwarfs Mind Train just to see, kind of test it out, test out the waters, and then maybe work up to Expedition Everest because you are, what is it, 189 feet up in the air, something like 199, that? 199, I believe. I believe it's as tall as they can go. Yeah. yeah. At the very tip without needing a... a without a red, light. flashing red light for planes, yes. Yeah. So you are very, very high up, and you get a pretty good view at some points at how high up you are. Um, that being said, someone commented below her question saying that she's afraid of heights. She did it, and she's so glad she did. And I did look, and I see Rachel checked for two. It is 44. I should have gone with my instinct there. Yeah, and she asked about Dinosaur and Indiana Jones. They're very, very similar rides. The, the difference is that in Dinosaur, there are dinosaurs, you know, coming at you kind of like they move three feet towards you as you're going but b as far as bumpiness and everything it's really really similar a uh, real similar track the exact same car as indiana jones so if you could do indiana jones i don't see why you wouldn't be able to do dinosaur i've actually never done dinosaur but i've really? watched a ride through yeah it looks like a lot of fun but i've never done it why I, just, I don't think i i never got to that area of the park whenever i've done <laughs> I, and it's not because, like, I avoided it. I just have never gotten over there. I mean, this might be controversial, but you should avoid it. Dinoland is terrible. But um, we <laughs> yeah, actually did We did Dinosaur this last trip. We did it three times because for some reason, my kids and my son, my son had been a, a little bit of a scaredy cat with rides. My daughter has been a thrill seeker since she was born, I think. She loves roller coasters. My son really was never like that. And for some reason, this trip, he decided, no, he loved all of these things. So we did Rock and Roller Coaster three times. We did Dinosaur three times. It was the first time he could ever go on Rock and Roller Coaster. And we put him on thinking, because he was just 48 inches. And we thought, oh, well, he would just try it once. So because we, we've never ridden it all together. My wife and I have had to split up because someone had to stay with him. So we okay. figured, oh, well, this way we'll ride it all together. Uh, my wife really likes it. My daughter loves it. So... We figured, uh, you know, we'll do it once, and we thought he would hate it. And as actually, I, I wish I was videotaping it. When you know, when you're in the line for Rock and Roller Coaster, there's a part where you can see the roller coaster take off, which is is a, mm -hmm. a, a on purpose actually. Disney does that with all their attractions, where you can always kind of get an idea of what's coming. Uh, for Expedition Everest, like you you mentioned, you can see the cars come down the big hill and you hear everybody scream. That's why yeah. Tower of Terror has those doors that open. It's so you can hear everybody screaming so you don't walk into it without knowing a little bit. Rock and Roller Coaster, the way they do that is you can see the takeoff, which is an electromagnetic takeoff where they it shoots the car from zero to, I forget, 45, 50. Is it 60? Um, I think so. It's, it's quick. Um, and... We're watching it. My son, who is six, is standing there. The car takes off, and he goes <gasps> and just froze like that. So we're we're going on thinking, "Oh my god, he's gonna hate this!" Like we'll do it once, and we'll never have to do it again. He loved it. He wanted to go, so we ended up doing it three times. And dinosaur the oh same. I don't think I I think I've been on dinosaur three times in my life before this trip, and we did it three times. Yeah, Tom. Tom confirms zero to sixty. So I believe Tom too. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my daughter has wanted to go on roller coasters since last year, and she is three. <laughs> That's so, how my daughter was, yeah. She's, like, dying to go on Seven Dwarfs Mind Train. I'm like, you're not big enough. She wants to go on Soarin' so bad. And... Well, she, can she do the Barnstormer? She's probably – is she tall? That's only 35, I think. Oh. So I think that's 35 <laughs> inches. So she's got to be close, I right? Of that. She's just, yeah, she's just this little tough cookie. Like, she's three and wants to do jujitsu already. Like, she's trying to do arm <laughs> bars on me. Like, so, I don't know. I'm Your house like, sounds weird. Oh, I'm sure. It's older. All right. What other questions do we have? And, and like I always say, if we don't answer your questions that you've asked, I will go back and answer them after this live stream. So don't worry if we don't get to it. We will answer at some point. Or you can always come back next week and answer it then. Come back next. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'm going to plug our YouTube page for a minute, Brian, okay. because I, okay, we make these videos for you. We really want to know what you want to see. And I think people are sometimes maybe too polite to actually list the videos that they want us to do. 
so if you ever have any suggestions for Brian or I, or if you have like collaboration ideas for stuff, maybe we could do together at some point. We should do that. With other people, let us know. Don't be nervous or too polite to listen on the comments. Like just like barrage us with ideas. Yeah, I, I, I will take pretty much all of you. One thing that I've gotten a lot lately that I will be coming hopefully within the next week or two is to do um, a redo of my Animal Kingdom map video because the last one I did was right before Pandora opened. Now that it's open, we have kind of a better idea of how the crowds are moving. So I'm going to do that within the next, like I said, hopefully next week or the week after. So, And I have a couple more maps to do. I haven't done either of the Disneyland parks. I haven't done Islands of Adventure, and I haven't done Hollywood Studios, which I do want to do, despite the fact that it's this big and has four rides now. So, I think that's a good point. And I am going to redo my older videos that mm -hmm. are of lower quality, where I'm talking like a slob. I'm just, oh, I talk so slow in those videos. That was back when I was pregnant and a preschool teacher. So I'm going to be redoing those, but in the meantime, you let us know what you want to see. I talk so slowly anyway. It's ter I Every time I shoot, I think, oh, my gosh, I'm racing through this. And then I listen back to it. I'm like, oh, no, this is normal face for most people. So, no, as, I talk too fast. As Derek Bergen always says, I, 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 uh, I sound like a 45 record played on 33 speed, which you probably <laughs> won't get because you're too young for that. But I, I get it. I laughed. I thought it was funny. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. You ask a question. I uh, see so somebody, where was it? Jonathan asked how Car Caribbean Beach is going with the renova uh, renovations. Um, and Kara jumped in and, and said that it's, it's rough right now. And she is 100% correct. Uh, Caribbean Beach is half construction zone right now. I mean, even driving by it on, uh, what is that, Buena Vista Drive, I think. You can see, I mean, you see the Caribbean Beach Resort sign, and then you see construction vehicles, and that's it. Barbados is gone. Half of Martinique is gone. That's where the uh, Riviera Resort, the DVC, that is going to be part of Caribbean Beach is going, is right where those two islands islands used to be. Um, the, um, uh, what is it, Old Port Royal, I think that's it, they, where the food court and the shops and stuff were. That's mostly closed right now because they're they're rebuilding that whole area. The pool is um, the main pool is still open. The rest of the islands are still open. They do have um, they they do have some some temporary food areas set up, but it is it's rough. If you can't get a really good price or get like they were for a while giving out gift cards for each night you were staying. I don't think they're doing that anymore. If you can get a deal like that, I would say go. If not, I would go with one of the Port Orleans or Coronado Springs because um, Caribbean Beach is, it's tough. It's tough to recommend right now. And I just did videos on both Port Orleans resorts. So head to our YouTube page yeah. and subscribe. I love French Quarter. It's my favorite. It's oh. one of my favorite resorts on property, honestly. Oh, yeah, I know. Even with the deluxe resorts, it's still one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. It's so quiet. It's so relaxing. I like how small it is. Oh, it's yeah. Great. And hearing, sitting outside at like 7 a.m. when they turn all the jazz music on is uh, is pretty sweet. I saw somebody oh, quick asked about if the Jungle Cruise was open again. And, yes, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, they are showing times on the Disney World website. So I think mm -hmm. it, it looks like it's open again. And yeah, I think you were just about to say we are over an hour already. So. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking maybe a few more questions because I mm -hmm. hear uh, my, my kids just got, I got home. Um, I got, I got nothing. I don't have to pick them up for an hour yet. So I'm good. Yeah, you're lucky. Okay, let's see. Let's see. What do we got? Oh, there's lots. Okay, Amanda. First night of Mickey's uh, very merry Christmas party. Usually busy or not so much. Any pointers on must do's? Um, our very standard kind of tips of the parties in general for Halloween and Christmas is it's less busy during the week, it tends to be more crowded the closer it gets to Halloween or Christmas and on the weekends. Uh, Brian, what do you think about the first night, though? I guess it depends what day it's on. Um, it's usually not that bad. Uh, you get, you'll, you'll get, you know, some of the locals and things that, that just want to go and are kind of waiting for it. Um, but the first early, because they start, I think it's November 9th ish, somewhere around there they start. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So yep. by by then, not that many people are really thinking about Christmas. It, it's not a bad time to go. Any time before Thanksgiving will be a pretty good time. Weekdays are almost always better. The Tuesday, the Thursday parties are, are usually better than like the Friday or Sunday parties. Um, but any time that time of the year, you, you sh- it shouldn't be that busy, honestly. I'm going Tuesday, the 14th of November. So if you're going to that nice. party, come say hi to me. And and then I'll say hi back. <laughs> I see, uh, let's see, Kat asked, Poly Studio versus Grand Floridian Studio. And I see uh, a few people have, have uh, jumped in on this one. Two for Polly and one for Grand Floridian that I that I see. I would actually yeah. vote for Polly there as well. The Polynesian. Um, I, I prefer the the theming of the Polynesian anyway. That's just personal. But uh, from a transportation standpoint, the Polly Polly with if money doesn't matter, Polynesian is my favorite resort. Uh, partially because it's very easy to get to the Magic Kingdom via the monorail and mm-hmm. Epcot because. Um, you can just walk from there to the, tra- the the TTC, the Transportation Ticket Center, and take the monorail from Epcot. You don't have to do the double monorail if you don't want to, especially if you're in. If you're asking about a studio, so I assume that's DVC, uh, the Vacation Clubs, which are all kind of on the the eastern end of the Polynesian, which is the end closest to the TTC. Uh, from over there, you're looking at less than a 10 minute walk, and then you get on the monorail to Epcot, Grand Floridian. It is a slightly more convenient monorail to the Magic Kingdom because it's only one stop. But then to get to Epcot, you have to go through the Magic Kingdom stop, the Contemporary stop, and then to the TTC mm-hmm. to get it down. You can't walk from the, the Grand Floridian, even though it kind of looks like you should be able to because it's a path that goes from the front of the Magic Kingdom to the canal. And they just never built a bridge because it, officially it's because the uh, – the, um, the electrical show. Why am I terrible? The electrical water pageant. Um, the electric water pageant comes out of that canal and they can't build a bridge there. But um, so you can't walk from there. The, the contemporary, at least you can walk from the poly. You can fairly easily get to two resorts. So that's why I, I generally favor the Polynesian over the Grand Floridian. But um, you just love the Polynesian anyway. That's just your favorite. I, I do. It? Yeah. I love the Polynesian. I like it's so relaxing to me and like I, I like any resort that I can just kind of wander around early in the morning and it's quiet and I listen to music those those big resorts I mean I, I really really love the way that like Wilderness Lodge Animal Kingdom Lodge Grand Floridian all look those soaring lobbies are awesome but other than you know I'm not the type to just go find a chair and relax in it I'm I'm a little too hyper for that. I like to walk. So there's not a lot of walking space around. Uh, Grand Floridian's not bad for that. It's a beautiful resort. The rooms are gorgeous. But um, if I'm deciding between those two, I'm gonna, the Polly's going to win. It's exactly why I love, you know, Yacht Beach and the Boardwalk. Mm-hmm. Is there's so much to see when you walk around either early in the morning. I remember we brought my son when he was six weeks old. And they're not sleeping through the night at that point. And my husband was nice enough to get up at five put him in the stroller and just walk him around the boardwalk and my kid mm-hmm. cried the whole time but no one was up and it didn't yeah. matter yeah it's just you yeah. and a bunch of runners at that early in the morning honestly it's, yeah. it's great and they're I, running away from you anyway and i i see scott asked about the path to the grand floor and that's the reason we've been told is that they they can't build the bridge there because the the elect, the water pageant comes out of there why they i, I feel like that is something that could easily do if they wanted to but it it is it's it it it, i have this this kind of evil slytherin like laugh every time i see somebody strolling down that path from the magic kingdom towards the grand floridian as i'm on the monorail above them knowing that they're going to get to the end and just go oh darn it like we gotta turn around monorail above them no they're walking past brian and brian's like nope yeah No, it's, 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 there isn't even a sign saying it. No, it literally, like, it's, it has lanterns, it has benches, it looks like a nice path, and then you get to the end and you just have to turn around and go back. It is, it is terribly cruel to people. You wonder why they don't label it at that point. I don't know. Maybe no one complains. Maybe they just think, oh, that was my mistake. 
I don't know. I, I, I guess not. Or people don't want to admit that like, oh no, I was dumb. I didn't, I thought that was going to go all the way and it didn't, but cause there is a path. Cause the thing is if they completed that path, cause there is a very nice walking path between the Grand Floridian and the Polynesian. So if they completed that path, you'd actually be able to walk to the magic kingdom from all three seven seas lagoon resorts. Uh, it would be a long walk from the Polynesian all the way around, but it would definitely, to, in my mind, it would bump the Grand Floridian up quite a bit because you'd be able, if you could walk to the Magic Kingdom from there. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I heard the the water pageant floats took a pretty good beating in, in Hurricane Irma, so uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll finally retire that ancient piece of. Uh, no. Don't say it. <laughs> I knew. I was just waiting for your reaction there. Don't say it. No, it's fine. I have no problem. It's it's adorable. Well, Brian, you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, now, now things are tense. No, they're not. Okay, so Scott, do we have any more questions? Do you, well, you have another hour. Do you want to no. watch we keep going? No, I, I, I don't think I could do that. I think, I, I think I'm going to need to take a bathroom break at some point, so... I think people will stop watching if we keep going. I'm amazed people are watching now, honestly. <laughs> I know, but it's been fun. I like doing this. This is it. fun, yeah. I'll be back I'll be back next week for yours too, so we'll All right. We'll, well see. then I guess we can keep working together. Only if you don't diss the pageant again. That's how I'm starting next week, yeah. Blitherin. I'm I'm gonna have to get a shirt made up that that trashes the electric water pageant. Oh, I'm sure Derek will create that for you. Probably with his artistic yeah. skills, black and white. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm out. But thank you so much for watching. Again, subscribe to our YouTube page. Check our website out at touringplans.com. And I will be back next week with Brian. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Excellent to each other. Bye-bye. Yeah.